Hello friends, neighbors, Johnny Rooster Neighbor here. Welcome to the Nook and welcome to another part of this 18 year old scotch series. Now, if you've just dropped in, this is not the best 18 year old scotches video. That's not my intent. I was trying to collect a few affordable 18 year old scotches a couple of years ago and then it's now tough to get anything affordable in 18 year and I still wanted to comment on a few of those bottles that I had kicking around the shelves. So these are a little more approachable and they still are a little more affordable 18 year olds. Last week I did Tomatin and this week I'm going to do Auchentoshin, 18 year old Lowland Scotch. And then I'm going to talk about Glenfiddich. Uh, everybody in the world knows about Glenfiddich, but I will give some thoughts on their 18 year old in this short series. I'm just sharing a little bit of thoughts of what 18 year old Scotch might hold for us. So if you've got any Auchentoshin 18 or Glenfiddich or anything, uh, maybe 18, why don't you pour a little dram and sip along. Three, four. Well, thanks for coming back. Um, as I tried to say in the opener, you know, this is uh, just some thoughts, some some interest on a few 18 year old scotches. It's not, you know, my pick of the best 18 year old scotches that a person can get. I will say I probably haven't had enough 18 year old scotch to be someone giving that opinion. Instead, like this Auchentoshin, these scotches are, um, if you're gonna move into an age stamp like an 18 year old, uh, these are still on most shelves and are fairly approachable, but are they any good? This Auchentoshin 18 year old is 43% and is aged, I believe, only in X bourbon. Sadly, even though it carries a nice age stamp, it's been kicking around in wood for a minimum of 18 years old. Uh, at 43 and no other statements, I'm sad because I bet it's colored and I bet it's chill filtered. But if we put that aside, this bottle in my area, maybe at the end I'll talk a bit more about pricing because I've heard a lot of different things. But in my market of the 18s that I'm trying out in this short series, this is actually still fairly affordable. I've seen it as a regular price at $101 and that was just last week. Uh, but it's usually between $101 and $120 Canadian, which now is actually a reasonable amount of money for an 18 year old. But I got that two years ago for 80 bucks, easier on the wallet. Let's try this one, nose and taste. You know, it's sweet, toffee, caramel forward. I would say there's a little bit of bitter green apple, uh, a little bit of uh, pear. Yeah, and it comes back into a little more fruit sweetness, a little more, um, uh, a little bit of floral vanilla, a little bit of sweet, sweet fruit of some kind. Actually, riper fruit now. So it started like well, I was trying to say green apple and I don't mean green like an unripe apple. I mean like that, like uh, that sharper, slightly sour, but it's full ripe green apple. Um, so I was getting a bit of that on the nose, but coming back to it, letting it sit a little bit, I would say um, there's some under sweetness, a little more ripe fruit sweetness, but it's, it's after you've let it sit or after you've nosed it a bit. Let's jump in on the palate. Slancha. Palate here is, um, Again, a little more caramel up front, a little more um, fruit cocktail, a little more, I, uh, I, I set it in the nose and it's not quite bitter, but a little bitter. Uh, they say green tea note and I, I'm getting a bit of that green tea note, a little bit of that uh, tannic tea and a little bit of slight bitterness. There's a little, there's some oaking coming through now, um, some almonds. Uh, so that's a sweet wood for me, almonds. A um, little drying, not a lot, not a lot of finish. Let's try another sip. That was pleasant enough. It was uh, not too coating, but it was nice in the mouth. Uh, sweet, I'm still gonna go with caramel, some apples, uh, almonds. Um, they say green tea and I'm gonna have to agree with that. I don't like taking their tasting notes, but it's in my mind and, and I can get it. So it's a little bit tannic on the, on the oak. And, and a little bit of that, um, you know, that tea, tea presence. Finish isn't quite as long as I would like. In fact, our early video that I just started out last week, I, I suggested one of the key differences when you move up in age, for me and my experience, has been a lengthened palate. I find the flavors really do linger. There are a couple extra layers and they linger longer. Um, 
I should have actually poured a little bit of the tomatin that I did last week. I would suggest to you that the tomatin is, is, a, is a stronger uh, layered. Of course, it has Oloroso sherry, so it's got a lot of those dried fruits in it. And for me, it's it's a better 18-year-old if I'm just comparing those two. Um, this one, I would say, if I paid $120 for this bottle, I would be disappointed. Is this a decent enough scotch? You bet. And at 80 bucks, I'm happy to have it. But it doesn't give as much of the length that I mentioned 18-year-olds do, and it's it doesn't have as many layers. Now, it's there's nothing um, upsetting or or or, or off-putting. It's a good scotch. But it's tough in the market right now. There are younger scotches that give me more of that layers and more of that pause that I want when I reach for an older age temp scotch. So this one's only maybe three and three quarter stars, which is tough. And it's a little expensive right now. So I didn't have a bottle of Glenfiddich open and I wanted to bring it into the conversation. I've had Glenfiddich 18 over the years and uh, I have no idea if the camera can catch this tiny little bottle. Um, but I went out and got a sample because I thought it'd be nice for our conversation. Uh, better than the, the blend uh, that I compared the tomatin to because it is another single malt. So all barley, all one distillery. A difference here with Glenfiddich is, um, you know, this one has some Oloroso and some ex bourbon. So there could be, there should be some different uh, notes coming along with different casks. It's also only 40%. So here we were 43. We've dropped down to 40% and absolutely convinced filtered and colored, especially because, well, it's darker and it has sherry, so I could give it to them, but I, I'm I'm super confident this is uh, colored and filtered. So Glenfiddich, uh, price-wise, in my area, if, if I say the upper one was 120, it's 100 to 120, and I've seen this one from about 120 to 140, so it is a little bit more. Let's try it, nose and palate. So right away, uh, you know, the fruits that are speaking really do speak to some more Oloroso. Where this, uh, I've got vanillas and slight bitter apple. This I've got, uh, you know, fuller fruit, a little berry in there, a little bit of, uh, this one's pretty sweet right now. So I'm, I'm going to go strawberry. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have had that listed as a note, but it, it, right now in comparison, it's coming off a bit that way. But it's it's lighter, really. Like it doesn't have any of the tannic notes that I was getting here. It, it it's it's bright. It's a little floral, uh, and sweet. And like I'm saying, like sweet ripe strawberries. I don't want to overemphasize that because it's never been a note I've written down. But but I would say some 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 uh, um, light stone fruit, light berry, and and a bit of nice orchard apple. Characteristic Glenfiddich orchard apple. Okay, let's get into it. Georgia. That's nice. It's lighter. Um, it is fruitier. It's sweeter. It's more approachable. I've got a little bit of malt baking characteristic in there. So now I've got, uh, you know, strawberry tart. So, you know, some of that crust, some of that um, baked down goodness, a little more baking spices. Try another quick sip. Better breathe it out and talk to you a little bit about even the finish because it's surprising to me that at 40%, um, it's carrying more presence than the 43% Akintoshin here. Um, so it, it is, uh, you know, sweet, um, but but bodied with that malt and that pastry. And then now in the finish, it's actually got a little bit of drying. It's got a little more baking spice, a little more, not pepper, but, but almost heat at 40%, which is wild because that's as light as you can get and still be a whiskey um, and a little longer finish. So surprising to me um in some ways that a, a big house can put out a 40 percenter and have a decent 18 year old but this is a decent scotch would i personally pay 140 for this i would not um i i like even some of their own the solera 15 year old which i can get for significantly less uh is fruitier brighter and i i i like it um their 14 year old and bourbon cask has some of that characteristic orchard and then add some new oak or some, you know, like a little more, more, more oaking forward. If I want that and Glenfiddich house style, I'm going to go there for $140. I just, I'm just not going to bring this home, but it's good. And in my star rating, if I did this three and three quarters, maybe I should have done three and a half and done this one three and three quarters because it has to be better than this Akintoshin for me. It just is a little more flavors and, 
and uh, and 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 I so I guess I guess I have to give it to a four, but but with the caveat that $140, I need a four and a half star to bring it home, <laughs> something like that. So it's good and surprisingly so because it's a big house and has every knock and a roll against it, 40% colored, filtered, all of that stuff. But uh, but it's a good whiskey and and I and I think a decent 18 year old price aside. This Akintoshin is a letdown for me. And I don't mind some there. I've been criticized for liking their three wood, but I like their three wood and would buy their three wood. And I, it regularly goes on sale in my area for 65 bucks, 10 times more often than this 18 year old. So I'm a little let down over here. Here, the price lets me down. I'm not gonna bring another bottle home anytime soon, but it's some decent flavors. What are some of your experiences with 18 year old scotches? Can you still get them for an okay price? Or have you basically sworn them off and said, you know what, uh, there's better whiskey for less money and age is just a number. Thanks for joining me. See you guys on the next one.